All right. <laughs> the last move uh, we made, uh, and where I would would be by home uh, for the rest of my young life until I uh, joined the army in 1971, and that would be the home on uh, First Avenue. Now, this was big. This was this was huge. <laughs> So, uh, why? Because finally, after all these years of living out in what I called the country, <laughs> in hindsight, now we were always in the country, no matter where we were in Huntingburg. But moving in town, uh, into town uh, proper, I guess you, uh, changed a lot of things in my life. And I was coming of age, so to speak, you know, I'm into my teen years. And now all of the things that I wanted uh, to be able to do and go to and see and participate in were now readily available, let's say, because I'm in town now. <laughs> I'm in Huntingburg. We're in a house inside the city limits of Huntingburg. And so, uh, and I'm coming into, and this is on First Avenue, uh, I'm coming into my teen years so a lot of things are changing it. Now, uh, let's, um, uh, I've already mentioned uh, Eddie, Ed Dykus, and uh, I don't think I, uh, in fact, people talk about it all the time, about it. people have repressed memories and stuff, you know, of things, cause tragic things or bad things that happen and they don't want to bring them up, but if I didn't say it before, Ed Dykus was probably now what I call, and there's, there's a few, uh, very few of these I have in my life, uh, uh, was a, a mentor to me, obviously. Um, Ed was a, a big, huge part of my life. Uh, uh, he represented a big brother, uh, he, someone, uh, I, I guess I uh, just uh, not, I, you know, I didn't sit down one day and say, oh, I'm be just like Ed. But uh, <laughs> looking back now, that's exactly what I did. I wanted to be like Ed. I, I just, I, I did, you know, he, even though he's four years older than I was, you know, he represented what I wanted to be like. Uh, and um, uh, I mentioned before, he had come from uh, English India. I don't know exactly when his family had moved to uh, Huntingburg. He had come from uh, English Indiana, which is not too far from Huntingburg, but it's an even smaller town than Huntingburg. Uh, and Ed was a, uh, was a drummer, loved the Beatles, we talked about that. And, uh, but uh, by my becoming uh, friends with Ed and him sort of really, in a lot of ways, kind of adopting me as his uh, younger brother. Um, there were things, you know, like I said, he's just somebody I wanted to be like, you know. Ed didn't smoke, Ed didn't drink. Uh, he loved music, he loved the Beatles. Um, Ed was also, uh, and I just remembered this recently, Ed was a Boy Scout. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I forgot about that. And he, I remember going to some Boy Scout meetings in town that he would go to. He was pretty high, he had a pretty uh, a high rank in the Boy Scouts. I don't remember that he was an Eagle Scout, but uh, so, Ed was, uh, you know, what I would call a, a pretty morally straight person, you know, he was, uh, had beliefs. He didn't verbalize them uh, much, but he just lived that way, you know. Um, just, uh, it, um, in one sense, Ed was kind of a quiet person in a lot of ways, but, uh, uh, you know, I just wanted to emulate him, I wanted to be like him. And so for a few years, you know, that's exactly, uh, I'm with this guy who represents everything I want to be and everything I want to be like. And uh, we enjoyed some of the same things, the music, you know, he wanted to be in the band, I wanted to be in the band, and he was a drummer and I'm a singer, and so on and so forth. And, and uh, so, uh, and he treated me Extremely well. I mean, Ed had a job, and you know, and I'm just, I'm, I, I think I had part time jobs and stuff. Uh, well, I, actually, not so much that. 
when I first met Ed. But Ed left uh, uh, to join the Navy. He went into the Navy. And uh, when I look back on now, that was pretty, uh, that was pretty, uh, for lack of a better word, that was, that was pretty traumatic to me. You know, uh, I'm, you know, I'm losing my, my, my best friend and I'm sort of losing my, my compass, my rudder, you know. Uh, and I think that if Ed had not gone to join the Navy, uh, did I say Navy? <laughs> uh, I hope he had said Navy. Uh, yeah, he was in the Navy, he joined the Navy. Um, uh, I think possibly, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not trying to put the blame on anyone or anything. We do things, we do what we do, and we're responsible for the things we do. But uh, had he not left and, and joined the Navy and stayed, just stayed there uh, and, and went to work there somewhere, uh, I might have avoided a couple of things at bad times in my life that, that, that would happen after he left and while he was gone for that four years. Uh, but I... Uh, you know, I remember, uh, uh, it's hard to remember because I think, you know, your, your brain or something doesn't want to remember, but that was really, it was really, it was a huge loss. And probably the biggest loss, uh, feeling of loss that I had had up to that time in, in my young life was when Ed went away. And so I kind of was floating around, you know, not having the direction of my life uh, just, and missing him, you know, uh, during this time, especially during the first couple of years that he was gone. And uh, uh, I ended up uh, uh, getting in trouble. Uh, uh, I was getting, uh, <laughs> I think on my 14th birthday, I was in the uh, uh, police station in Huntingburg, got picked up for uh, doing some actually just stupid things and um, uh, and um, uh, that, you know I could go into all the details but just to say we were out uh, one night with, with some friends <laughs> I thought they were my friends and I was just uh, following along but that doesn't you know I was just as guilty as the, as the, as the so called leader of this little group that went out that night and, and stole all these things we did I mean, we were out there we were out damaging things, stealing things, and uh, really, you know, uh, I, I think some of the stuff might have been things that we wanted, but well, you know, we were like doing damage to a state police car <laughs> in town, like breaking antennas and, and breaking into a, 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 a factory building, just the, uh, but we were just doing it in hindsight. We just do it, it was just like, we just wanted to be uh, mean and, and uh, and uh, uh, it didn't take long for the police to figure out who had done it and, and picked up the culprits, which was me and, and uh, a guy named Kim Denton, who was supposedly the leader, and, and uh, I think uh, one or two other guys that night. It didn't take long because we were so stupid. Uh, and uh, 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 you know, pulled us into the <laughs> the Hungary police station, which is right behind the, the, the canteen, and uh, uh, called my dad. And my dad comes to pick me up, and this is on my birthday. And uh, some things you, you never forget. And one was my dad coming to pick me up, and he got us, uh, if I remember right, his, his words were, uh, nice birthday, huh, Tim? <laughs> and that hurt. Uh, that hurt. You know, I knew I had just totally let him down. And as time would go on and throughout life, you know, I would realize later on just how much, no, it wasn't me that was hurt. It was him that hurt. I had hurt him. And the more I came to that realization, the more it hurt. You know, the more that event hurt. Uh, because I embarrassed him, I let him down. And these were, this is a small town, so he knows all the police. He knows everybody in this town, you know. And uh, <laughs> uh, so that happened. Uh, I uh, eventually the, the charges were dropped on that, but 
only after we were taken to court. And I don't know why they, <laughs> uh, I don't know why uh, the charges were dropped for lack of evidence. I don't know why there was lack of evidence. I had it in my hand, you know, I know it's a CB radio, as a matter of fact. Uh, what I was gonna do with that CB radio, what we were gonna do with that, those CB radios, I don't know. Uh, but uh, they took us to court and the uh, uh, district attorney, or I guess or whatever it was at the time, uh, uh, he scared the bejesus out of me because we were, we were actually in the courtroom in Jasper. Uh, and uh, I remember him uh, pointing his finger at, at me and all of us, but it seemed like his finger was pointing at me and said, you know, I'm, you know, you guys, you boys are going to go to reform school, you know. <laughs> And I took it to heart, you know. I don't know. I know one one of the guys, Kim, didn't. He didn't. It didn't seem to phase him, but uh, as much as it did. But it just scared me to death. So uh, they did. Uh, uh, but I think it had the effect that he wanted to. And after spending like 20, 30 years of my life just hating that guy, uh, the district attorney or, or uh, the prosecutor, I guess I should say. Uh, you know, I realized later on that he got. For me, uh, he did me a big favor because he scared me so bad that I never associated with Kim Denton the rest of my life, you know. Uh, I went back and stayed in school and graduated from school. And uh, for the most part, I didn't, I don't, you know, I, I went, you know, <laughs> kind of straight. Um, and uh, uh, so that, uh, and... Was it Ed's fault because uh, he left? No, he left to join the Navy. It was my fault for not, uh, you know, applying some of the stuff that I had already learned from him. Uh, you know, as far and, and staying out of trouble. You know, I, you know, if, if maybe if it had not gone, maybe I wouldn't have ended up because I wouldn't have ended up with Kim Denton and, and and this group. Now later on, Kim Denton would go on to leave. I don't know if Kim's even still alive. I, Something tells me he's probably not, but I think I went from worse to worse to worse. I mean, they picked him up later on. He was got into stealing cars. He was he was not a bad guy. Unfortunately, he was very smart, but but he used it for all the wrong things. So, uh, but that happened, you know. And so it's it's hard to look back now and and uh, when you're age fourteen, fifteen, you know, and and. Uh, say, yeah, you know, I really did that. I, you know, how the hell could I do something like that, you know? So, uh, so you know, that's why I believe today that people people can change because I, I, I like to think I did it myself. You know. People can change. Say, because you did something when you're 10, 11, 12, 13, 16, 18, you know, that doesn't mean, that doesn't have to uh, mean that that's the way you're going to be in your life, you know, because it doesn't, you know. You, you're just... Uh, a moment at night, and he, you know, uh, where we did something wrong, and, and uh, but it doesn't really represent who I was as a whole. So, uh, and which hopefully I was able to show for the most part the rest of my life that that's not who I was. But so um, anyway, uh, and like I said, I that's when I started smoking. Uh, uh, hanging out with the wrong people and uh, uh, that continued for a while until I actually did get more even after Ed left I was able to that I this was the time I started getting involved in music I did get me and Mike got into a band which would with the Hawk Meister and some other guys from around the area we had a pretty good little band for a while it was called the circus <laughs> of all the names but we were we were we were having fun uh, and um, and so that getting into music, I think, kind of helped me get out. Also, uh, you know, I uh, uh, was uh, beginning to have some uh, uh, relationship with girls, and so, uh, and yeah, I fell in love with some young lady, <laughs> uh, and uh, I think that she had a big uh, part too, and. Uh, uh, keeping me uh, straight and you know, so, you know, so, uh, but uh, Ed was my first mentor, 
and losing him had a big impact on my life, you know. Uh, and uh, I still regret to this day that I could never get back to Huntingburg and be with Ed again and kind of rekindle what we did and have a band again. And I think that was one of my things I wanted to do after I retired from the Army was go back home to Huntingburg and get into a, a band and do something. I don't know, it's just a real local level with that. Uh, Mike and, and, and Ed. You always come back to hurting me. I'm beginning to believe I get my kicks from being hurt. Instead of making love feel better, you just make it worse. You tell me go, then call me back, and then you set me free. You always come back to hurting me. Always come back to hurting me. 